while ago, a friend of mine came over to my house with a box of her garbage. <laughs> she said, hey, can you turn this into anything? Now this cone used to live inside of a doll's butt. They are called this. And she actually collects these wonderful, weird dolls. She was like, I, I don't know what to do with this thing. This thing is very clearly haunted. You can tell just by the music that it plays. I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight. My favorite. <laughs> So I was gifted this cursed piece of garbage to transform into whatever I wanted, and I decided that I was going to turn it into my ideal birthday cake. I dressed to match my cake. Just a heads up, this was originally a short, but so many of you requested, I decided that I had to acquiesce and at your behest, I have made this into a longer video. So some of these clips might be cropped a little bit weird, but you guys really don't seem to care about that. You're very supportive and I really appreciate it. Thanks for taking what you can get. Let's go make a cursed cake, darling. So our little music box got the nickname Danger Cone because it's actually full of all of these sharp pins that were holding it to the doll's body when I initially got it. And I almost poked myself in the arm with one of them. So I made sure to put on some gloves to keep myself safe. The cone also has a mechanism on the bottom and that's actually what I'm interested in. You can crank it up and then it will spin. Also just an aside, before I started tampering with this 1960s cardboard, I did make sure that I put a mask on because there was a bunch of dust in it. And I don't know what chemicals or glue were considered safe back then that are now not not. For how dinged up all the cardboard was, the internal mechanisms were actually working pretty smoothly and they didn't need me to do anything to them except clean it up a little bit and pull out some of these rusty looking pins so that I didn't accidentally poke myself with those as well. I'm not looking to get a tetanus shot today, you guys. So for the base of our cake, I used these buckets that I had hanging out in my Halloween stash and I just drew with a Sharpie until I was happy. I'm making a mouth on the bottom because what we're going for is a little bit of like a sweet, creepy cute monster cake. Now when it comes to faking frosting, there's a lot of things that you can do. I personally enjoy using a very thick or what's called a viscous paint. This sort of paint is used by people that are predominantly trying to put a bunch of texture in, normally like abstract artists that are trying to create layers, but it also works great if you have a spatula and you use it as cake frosting. Now the bucket did not fit perfectly around our spinning base, so I did have to cut up some foam core just to make sure that it would fit neatly inside. And I also trimmed the base because we do not want our cake to be dragging her skirt a through the dirt. And before I got too much further, I did also install a string of battery operated lights because I want this girl to shine. Now I did leave our base to dry overnight and in the morning I came back and I measured out some epoxy sculpt. This stuff is basically really hard air dry clay and you just mix your two equal parts together and away you go. Once I got everything looking fantastic, <laughs> I was a little worried about the motor inside of the music box not being able to handle the weight. So I did a little test run and it turned out that it could handle that end a whole lot more. I was planning on doing a lot of the icing piping on the cake later, but I did decide that I wanted some of the more delicate pieces made out of epoxy sculpt because this thing is going to be moving around if it gets bumped on something. I really don't want a delicate strand to go flying off. And this stuff dries like ceramic. It's pretty hardcore. The details may look dainty, but I want them to stand their own in a knife fight. You know, in case someone tries to cut a slice out of this. I gave the epoxy sculpt the night to dry and then went over it with some more of the viscous paint so that it would match the rest of our cake. And since I had realized that the motor was actually able to handle a lot of weight, I tested it and realized that it could handle not only one layer, but three layers. To build the second layer, I just used a little bit of foam core and one of the plastic plastic cups that I use for measuring when I make resin. I also decided that I wanted to make this layer like a cozy little cave, so I cut out a heart shape so that someone could hang out inside. To give the interior of the cake cave a more inviting feel, I decided that I would use a more luxurious and darker frosting on the inside so it would have a little bit of depth. I used the viscous paint again on the outside to give everything that frosting effect, and then I started to get to work on our interior friend, which I decided was going to be a little white bat. To make our little flying friend, I am using polymer clay, and I also decided that I was going to give him a little pig nose. I feel like bats have pig noses in real life. You guys can let me know if you agree in the comments or not, but I think that they're pretty close. Once I had created the tenant for our new spacious rental property, I had to go through the arduous task of threading this through the top. And I would love to say that this task was easy, but there was a lot of things that happened off camera, like me accidentally melting this string with hot glue and then freaking out because it was really hard for me to attach it in the first place. I managed to get him in there though, eventually. For our third and final layer, I am going to be trying to create a miniature carousel because of course I am. For those of you that aren't in the know, my name is actually pronounced Karis and carousel has recently 
instantly become one of my nicknames. So again, I used my foam core trick and I also used some of these flat topped toothpicks that I got at the Japanese dollar store. I wanted to test and make sure that I had the right amount of posts to hold up the other end of the Dixie cup and foam core before I went ahead and disassembled everything so that it could be painted more easily. Now for the individual carousel characters, I did sculpt miniature bats, ghosts, and other spooky friends to swirl around the top so that we were keeping with the creepy cute theme. I also made the pointed carousel top out of polymer clay to cover up the cup's edge. And let me tell you, I was sure grateful for these gloves because it sure wanted to be my friend and it didn't want to let go of my hand. I went ahead and added some of that frosting paint to the top of our carousel before adding more of our finishing touches, like a set of wings that I made out of hot pressed watercolor paper and just attached with a little bit of hot glue. I painted the wings with my favorite shade, which is an 80s or Barbie pink as I like to call it, before I started using some of this fake decoration frosting. I used some felting fleece that looked like cotton candy for some nesting inside of our heart cake cave, and then just added a bunch of other details like painting the epoxy frosting and covering up any cracks or crevices with some of that extra silicone icing. I feel like one of the advantages to making one of these fake cakes is that if there's something that you don't like or something that's kind of making it obvious that it's not real, it's super easy to just add a little swirl of lace or, or some frosting and it'll cover up your tracks that you don't know what you're doing. And now that we've covered up anything that could be considered unsightly, it's time for the moody glamour shots. Enjoy. Well, that was a really fun project. And just to end cap another question that people had had for me, I have to keep the base separate from the top and wind it up independently. Otherwise the sculpture won't work. The other fun fact is it actually was designed to spin around the table because this was supposed to be a dancing lady. So if I ever do decide to have dinner with this present, uh, it will move around and bother guests and destroy their table settings. I feel that it is a much added bonus. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and having fun. Make sure to do the things and click the buttons and beat the pal. Okay, I love you, bye! Okay, I think that's enough footage. Besides, I have to fart. I don't want them to hear it.